caution. Comparing yourself to others can be both positive and negative. Hello and welcome back to my writing journey. I'm Ellen Byram, author of The Crime of Fashion Mysteries and others, and soon to be published, Crook Tales for Two. And this week, I'm considering the way we compare ourselves to others, whether we mean to or not. Comparisons work two ways. They can spur you on to greater things, or they can result in a lot of unhappiness and slow you down. A certain amount of comparison is fine. We're human and we compare each other all the time. To compare is to grab a yardstick and measure yourself against it and your progress as a writer for you, but not for the rest of the world. Sometimes comparisons spur us to achieve more. Maybe someone else's book is coming out and you realize you're way behind on your deadline. That can spur you to better things, writing faster, turning off the television, and just concentrating on your own work. Sometimes a bit of silent competition is a good thing, but you need to get back to work. When you compare yourself, there has to be an end point. Comparisons can lead to jealousy, lack of faith in ourselves, and question whether or not we're good enough, whether we will ever make it. And that's just going to slow you down. It's like reading all those glowing Facebook posts where they're edited to make people look their best. And sometimes that makes you feel your worst. It's tricky for writers because we want to talk with friends and readers and present our best selves, even though our worst selves might be far more entertaining. Which reminds me of a friend I had who used to get these insane Christmas letters, these family Christmas letters, you know, the long ones that are glowing and tell everybody of their accomplishments. Well, this Christmas letter was a little bit different. It was so different, we would get together, read them aloud, and laugh ourselves sick. One went something like this. Merry Christmas. Please note our new address. We had to move this year because our son is getting out of prison and threatened to murder us. If you hear from Michael, don't tell him where we are. There's so much more to that story that you want to hear, but only so much room in a Christmas letter. I love the fact that it's a self-imposed witness protection program, but we still have to tell everybody about it. And then there are some people, they have magical lives, and they are born with advantages to others. They are rich, they have connections. It may not get them where they want to go. I am reminded of a friend who told me once, Look how far you've gotten, how much you've done, and you don't even know anyone. That's the point. Not that I don't know anyone. I believe I do know people. But I have persevered when things didn't seem likely to happen, when that stubborn streak kicks in and you take action. The person who wins all the awards, maybe they have sorrows we don't understand. Maybe they have a knack for a certain kind of writing, but desperately want to write something bigger and better. Maybe they want a different kind of project. Maybe they want to write a screenplay. Maybe they want to write a literary novel instead of pulp fiction. Reminds me of a story Bob told me once. He walked into a bookstore and a very famous author's books were in the clerk's hands. He was taking them from one part of the store to another. And Bob said, well, why are you moving them from fiction to literature? And the clerk said, he died. As if it's obvious, some things are out of your hands. But don't worry about it. If we stop comparing ourselves to others, we'll have more time to concentrate on the things that are important to ourselves. When I feel like I haven't accomplished enough and the next book seems far off, I try to stand still and take stock of what I have accomplished so far. The books I've published, the plays that have been produced, and it starts to add up. You can compare yourself to things that make you feel better, not the things that make you feel worse. Look at what you have accomplished. It may be more than you think. That's all I have for today, and I'll talk to you next week. Bye.